Yeah. All praises is due to the Lord of the worlds. Today is going to be very interesting. And we are going to get right into it. We're going to talk about how Jesus is the servant of servants. And the prophet Isa is the Canaan. This is going to be in Genesis 9.22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. And he told his two brethren without. Verse 24. And Noah awoke from his wine. And he knew what his younger son, key words, younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Now, Canaan didn't do anything. Canaan was innocent. He was the servant of servants all because of what his father did. And I declare to you right now, that all because of what Paul, the father of the Christian church, has done, Jesus had to become the servant of servants. Now, let's get into some scriptures that is going to prove that there was always someone greater than Jesus. Now, the type and shadow of Jesus in this context is going to be Joseph. Let's go to Genesis 39 and 9. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? No one was greater in that house but Potiphar. Potiphar was the one he would be sinning against, seeing that that was his wife. Now let's go to Genesis 48 and 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. So you have Ephraim and Manasseh. Now Ephraim is a picture of Paul. Manasseh is a picture of the Messiah. And Joseph said unto his father, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So here we have prophetically speaking of the prophet Isa, the Messiah, the Manasseh. He will be great. In the Quran, it tells us that he will be highly honored in this world and the world to come. But right here in this verse of scripture, we see that Ephraim was greater than Manasseh. He was greater. Now, we know that Jesus is the firstborn. How come we have these stories where the younger is greater than the elder? This is going into how someone in the house of Saul is greater than Jesus. Now, don't run. Don't run. We know that knowledge is progressive. We always learn more as the world turns. So stay with me. I'm going to prove this to you. Now, let's keep going and let's go to how Moses was greater than Joshua. In the Bible, it says that Moses was made a God to Pharaoh. He also was made a God to even to his brother Aaron, and Aaron was his prophet. Now, this is going to be Exodus 33 and 11, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speak unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant, Joshua, the son of Nun, we know that this is Christ because it said the son of Nun. He's the son of nobody. A young man departed not out of the tabernacle. So this is a picture of Christ. Christ was a servant to Moses. He said he didn't come to destroy the law of Moses. Now let's go to Numbers eleven twenty-eight. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, 
answered and said, my Lord Moses forbid them. So here we have Joshua. That is the Hebrew name of Jesus. He was a servant to Moses. And he literally says, my Lord, Moses, Joshua, one and one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses's minister, saying so. Joshua was a minister to Moses. That means he was an assistant to Moses. So with that, we see that Moses was greater than Joshua. Now, this is what you got to ask yourself. If Joshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus, how come Joshua wasn't first and Moses wasn't second? Now, we all think of two great prophets. You have the prophet Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him. And you have the prophet Isa, peace and blessings be upon him. One is the M, one is the J. The prophet like unto Moses is the prophet Mohammed. And the prophet like Joshua was the prophet Isa, who wasn't the greatest. He's not the greatest. Okay. Joshua was second in command and he was a servant to the prophet Moses. Going on, let's deal with how Zerubbabel was even greater than the high priest whose name was Joshua. This is going to be Haggai 114. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. So in this passage, Zerubbabel is greater than the high priest Joshua. This is also confirmed in Haggai 2.23. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, Jesus' name is not mentioned in the Old Testament as referring to him verbatim. We just have to look in the shadows like in the story of Joshua, Joseph, and so forth. But right here, Zerubbabel is the chosen servant. He was given the signet. Okay, now this is metaphorically speaking of Zerubbabel. Who is Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel is another name for Gideon, the man who destroyed the idols, the one who has his own Shahada. Shout for the sword of the Lord and shout for Gideon. This is all a picture of the prophet Muhammad. So we constantly keep seeing how Moses was greater than Joshua, how Ephraim was greater than Manasseh, and even how Zerubbabel or Jerubbabel was greater than Joshua. Now let's look at John the Baptist. Jesus with his own mouth says that John the Baptist was the greatest of all prophets born of women. Jesus with his own mouth, with his own admission, says that John was greater. This is going to be Matthew 11 and 8. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. He's talking about John the Baptist because John the Baptist wore camel's hair. Okay? He had animal's hair as clothing. Just like the wolf in sheep clothing, your boy Paul. You're going to see that John the Baptist was a similitude of the apostate Paul going on. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than thee. Now, this scripture is powerful. It's telling you that John the Baptist is the greatest prophet among those that are born of women. 
But this is the thing you got to understand. Jesus was born of a woman solely. So Jesus is saying that John the Baptist was greater than him. Now, we shouldn't be surprised after looking back at how Moses was greater than Joshua, how Zerubbabel was greater than Joshua, how Ephraim was greater than Manasseh. Jesus, with his own mouth, is saying, John the Baptist is the greatest prophet among those born of a woman. But he goes on to say that he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says that he was last of all, seen of Christ, indicating that he is the last messenger. But he also says that he is the least of all messengers. Paul is the false Abraham. Paul is the father of the religion of Christianity. That's why we call Christianity the house of Saul. It's not called the house of David. It's called the house of Saul because Saul is the greatest one in the house. We call the house of David Islam because Jesus from the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe of David, is the Messiah in Islam. Now, let's go on to another passage. This is going to be greater than Solomon. Matthew 12, 42, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now, Jesus said him and his father is one. He that have seen me has seen the father. This is not talking about God Almighty. This is talking about his twin brother. This is talking about Paul, who is the Joseph of Jesus. Now, let's get to how Jesus is the servant of servants. This is going to be John 14 and 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the father for my father is greater than I. Now, according to the gospels, we see that Jesus is saying that the father is greater than him. That's a no brainer. He's not talking about God almighty. He's telling you that Paul is greater than him. And who did he go to? According to the book of Acts, he appeared to Saul. Okay, Saul was the Joseph of Jesus. John 10, 29, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. Paul was the Pharaoh who refused to let God's people go. Now let's go to Genesis 41 and 40. Thou shalt be over my house according unto thy word. Shall all my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be greater than you. So Pharaoh is telling Joseph, I am the only person that's greater than you. Potiphar was greater than Jesus. Pharaoh is greater than Jesus. We constantly keep seeing that someone is greater than Jesus. Now, Joseph was not in charge. Pharaoh was in charge. Joseph was second in command, just like Joshua was second in command. Now, let's keep going. Let's talk about how Benjamin was the beloved. Genesis 42 and 4. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brother, for he said, lest peradventure mischief Befall him. Two sons. You have Joseph and Benjamin, which were beloved to Jacob. And then you have the prophet Isa and Paul. It's just that simple. When Jacob heard there was grain or corn in Egypt, he sent all of his boys, but he did not send Benjamin. I'm telling you something. The devil does not want the truth to come out about Paul. Man, he is holding this back 
as much as he can, okay? He don't want the world to see that there is an enemy in the camp. And there's an enemy in the tribes of Israel, and his name is the apostate Paul. And right here in the house of David, we have the revelation. We are revealing who is the real beloved son. This is the seed of the serpent that was prophesied in Genesis 3.15, whose head would be crushed. Now let's prove even more how Jesus was a picture of Joseph and how Joseph was a type and shadow of Jesus. This is going to be Genesis 42 and 10. And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. So the brothers of Joseph called him Lord. They called him Lord. Ain't that what they call Jesus today? They call him Lord. Genesis 42 and 30, the man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. So this is the only time in the Bible where the phrase, who is the Lord of the land? Joseph or the prophet Isa is the only man that is called the Lord of all the earth. Now, his brothers was looking at him like he was Lord. They was looking at him like he was in charge. But they could not see. There was another man that was over him, and that was Pharaoh. And that's exactly what is going on in the Christian church. Everybody is looking at Jesus like he's Lord, like he's Lord. But there's somebody else behind the scenes. It is Benjamin. It is your boy, Paul. He really is the Pharaoh. He really is the Potiphar. He is really the Holofernes. He is really the king of the Christian church. But everybody think it's Jesus. Everybody is so deceived in thinking that Jesus is Lord. No, Paul is Lord. Paul is the Pharaoh behind Joseph. Wake up. Now, in the Quran, we have the truth. We don't have the divination. We don't have the witchcraft. We have the truth that Allah is Lord of the worlds. But in this religion right here, Christianity, Jesus is Lord. That's why Joseph was Lord of Egypt. And Egypt is another name of the Christians, okay? The other Egypt that we would go in bondage to is not the Americas. It is not slavery as Nathaniel teaches. This is not talking about America, my brothers. This is not talking about the transatlantic slave trade. This is talking about the house of bondage, the house of Saul, what we call Christianity today. And it's the truth. You got to understand that we are still slaves of Pharaoh. We're slaves of Saul. We're slaves of Christianity. Right now, Christianity is the largest religion, refusing to let the people go. Now, let's keep going. This is going to be Genesis 42 and 13. And they said, thy servants are 12 brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. So in the Bible, it tells us that Paul is the father. Paul is the father. Paul is the Joseph of Jesus. We see that. And here we have all the other brothers are out looking for corn. But guess what? Guess who's at home? Who is at home? Benjamin. Why is he with his father? Why? Because the youngest is the father. The youngest man is the father. Okay, this is a picture of Ephraim being the father of Manasseh. This is a picture of Joseph being the father of Jesus. This is a picture of Jesus being the servant of servants. And he said, 
We are going to keep Simeon until you bring me Benjamin. We going to keep this boy until you bring Benjamin. You cannot see my face unless you bring me Benjamin. Now, the devil has been trying his best to keep secret what really happened to the prophet Isa and who is really the Lord of the Christian church. But right here in the house of David, we are bringing out the truth. Okay. He said, you're not going to see my face until you bring me Benjamin. And this is exactly why God told Joshua, there's a thief in the camp. And I'm not going to be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed thing from among you. This is exactly what's going on right now, y'all. The truth of Paul has to come out. The truth of Paul has to come out before anything else takes place prophetically. Joseph said, you're not going to see my face anymore until you bring me Benjamin. Now let's keep going. The youngest is the father. This is seen in Genesis 42 and 32. We be 12 brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father. In the land of Canaan. So the father is the brother. That's what's going on in Christianity. Here you have a man who is equal to Jesus being his father. Okay. This is idolatry and the Christians do not get it that Jesus is not Lord that he reports to one by the name of Pharaoh. He's under Paul. He's under the wolf in sheep clothing. But there's coming a day when Jesus will break the yoke from his brother's neck and he will come back and he said he was going to kill Jacob. Remember Esau said, I'm going to kill you, Jacob. I'm going to kill you, Benjamin. I'm coming for you. Okay, this is what this was all going into. Jesus will come back as a just ruler and the first thing he will destroy is Paul's church. Now let's keep going. I'm going to prove to you that Joseph was in another religion. Now Pharaoh was his God. Pharaoh was his Lord. Just like Paul is really the father, the Joseph of Jesus. This is going to be Genesis 42 and 15. Hereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. Ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. So he is swearing not by the name of his God. He's swearing by the name of Pharaoh. Joseph went from one religion to another religion. He went from serving the God of Israel to serving Pharaoh. And this is exactly what Jesus did. He went from serving the God of of Israel to serving the God whom we call Allah. He went from Judaism to what? Islam. He never had nothing to do with Christianity. Okay, that's the big lie that's been perpetrated upon him. That's not the woman he was interested in. He was not into Potiphar's wife, okay? He was interested in the virgin, okay? The daughter of Potiphar. And Joseph went from being an Israelite to being an Egyptian. Now, he couldn't even eat with his own brothers. He couldn't eat with his own brothers. And I'm going to get that scripture. This is going to be Genesis 43 and 32. And they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians, which did eat with him. By themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews. Why? For that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. So he's swearing by the life of another God. And what is he doing? He is not even eating with his brothers because he's in another religion. He has another set of guidelines. He has another book. <laughs> he has another book. 
And that's why when I boldly declare that Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslim only, it's true. It's the same thing with Joseph. Joseph was not living like an Israelite. He was living like an Egyptian. He was swearing by Pharaoh. Now, exposing the apostate Paul is what kills the devil. Let's go to Genesis 27 and 36. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he have taken away my blessing. And he said, has thou not reserved a blessing for me? So the story of Jacob and Esau is a picture of what Paul did to Christ. He stole his inheritance. And his name was Jacob, which means deceiver or supplanter. So what kills the devil, y'all, is when you tell the truth about Paul being the wolf in sheep clothing. God loves this. He loves the truth to be exalted. Now, let's go to Genesis 43 and 6. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? This is what kills the devil. This is what kills the devil when you bring up the sin of Paul. When you bring out the wickedness of Paul. When you expose him for the wolf in sheep clothing like he really is. And we're going to keep going and it's going to get more interesting. This is why Jacob was just like, man, why did you tell him you had another brother? Why you tell him that? That's how the devil is when I'm preaching this message right here. He don't like the truth about Paul to come out, but he can't stop it right here in the house of David. Now, we're going to go to Genesis 42 and 34. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you, your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. So he's saying, look, man. <laughs> I'm holding Simeon captive until you bring me Benjamin. This is not the first kidnap in the Bible. Lot was kidnapped, and this is the second kidnap, okay? We're going to keep this boy. We're going to keep Simeon until you bring me the money. Who is the money? Benjamin. Bing, bing, bing. Ching, ching, ching. Until you bring me the money. Who is the money? The money is Benjamin. All right, now we're going to keep going. Judah promised that if Benjamin doesn't come back safely, he will bear the blame. This is going to be Genesis 43 and 9. I will be surety for him of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. Jesus is going to continue to be the Nehemiah, to be the cupbearer until the truth of Paul really comes out. The tribe of Judah, okay, has to bear the blame until Benjamin comes out. That's why it's so important that you share this channel because we are bringing out the truth of what really happened, okay? There was a thief by the name of Paul who stole Christ's inheritance, okay? And until the truth of Paul comes out, ain't nothing else going on. Joseph said, unless you bring me Benjamin, you're not going to see my face, okay? You're not going to see Simeon either, <laughs> You're not going to be able to see Simeon until you bring me Benjamin. Now, this is what God told Joshua. I told you that earlier. I told you that earlier, but now I'm going to get the scripture. Joshua 7 and 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed from among you. So God is telling the Hebrew name of Jesus, Joshua. 
He's telling Joshua, he's telling Jesus, until you bring me Benjamin, I don't want to have anything to do with you. The truth about Paul has to come out. It has to come out, okay? Joshua is going to bear the blame until Benjamin comes out. Now let's get that scripture, Genesis 43 and 5. But if thou will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. Genesis 44 and 23. And thou saidest unto thy servants, except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. Now this is the definition of a ransom. I'm going to confiscate this person, okay? I'm going to put him in the war until you bring me another person. This is why Jesus was saying, take the cup from me. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Nevertheless, thy will be done. This was the true, sincere prayer of Christ. He did not want to be the cup bearer for Paul. Now, let's keep going. This is going to be Genesis 44. Why is the cup so important? Why did Joseph put the cup in Benjamin's sack? What's the big deal of him putting a cup in Benjamin's sack? Genesis 44 and 4. And when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have you rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh? Watch this, y'all. And whereby indeed he divineth, he hath done evil in so doing. So Joseph planted the cup in Benjamin's sack. And that cup Joseph had was the cup of divination. This is the cup of witchcraft, okay? Joseph was in another religion. He was swearing by Pharaoh. He was divining, which is something that is extremely prohibited in the nation of Israel. This is going into witchcraft, and this is exactly what Saul did before his death. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 28 and verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. In other words, he put on his real clothes because he's the wolf in sheep clothing. And he went And two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Now the context of this scripture is Saul quit hearing from God. God quit talking to him. Okay, so he had desperate measures to take. And what did he do? He went to the witch. Whom he was supposed to kill. He was supposed to kill witches. Okay. He used to kill witches. Just like Paul used to kill Christians. But what happened? He went to divine. Through a witch. To bring up a dead prophet. Oh that sounds familiar. This is exactly what the Christians are doing. With the prophet Isa. They say he's dead. But they're bringing him up. Because Paul teaches that Christ rose from the dead. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. So here we have on record the apostate Paul killing the Christian church. And then now he's the father of the Christian church. Then we have on record King Saul went from killing the witches to becoming a diviner of the witches. So when Joseph put the cup And Benjamin Sack. Wow. That right there was the bombshell. Okay. That's proof that Christianity is witchcraft. That's all it is. Now, I'm going to keep going. Watch this. This is going to be Genesis 44 and 15. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Know ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Joseph was a diviner. Okay, Joseph put Pharaoh's cup in his hand. He was the butler that was promoted to put the cup back in his hands. Okay, and Paul 
was a picture of the baker, okay, who had his head lifted from him. As history tells us, he was what? Beheaded. King Saul was what? Beheaded. John the Baptist was what? Beheaded. So with everything I brought out today, you see that divination is evil. Let's get that scripture. Deuteronomy 18 and 14. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of time and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Let's get Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now this is the reason why the Christian church suffered. They suffered because witchcraft and suffering goes hand in hand. Now Samuel, he told Saul in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity in idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. So witchcraft is Christianity okay Christianity is witchcraft Christianity comes from divination and Paul was the one teaching us about communion oh go to first Corinthians chapter 11 he talks about this is the cup okay the New Testament okay Paul is the man with the oracles like the Hithopel he was the man with the divination okay Christianity ain't nothing but witchcraft and I have to leave you with an example. I don't want to keep you long. I don't like to do the long-winded classes. I'm not into having people at the school 19 hours, okay? You know, because wisdom, man, when you got a sharp blade, you don't have to be cutting something for a long time. And I'm going to leave you with an example. In the book of Galatians chapter 1 of what we call Paul's divination this is going to be Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed now when he said this he also talked about him coming out of Arabia this was nothing but witchcraft that he used against the religion of Islam. And he tried his best to stop the religion of Islam by using his divination to foresee. Okay, let's get the definition of divination and I'll finish. The art or practice that seeks to foresee or foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge, usually by the interpretation of omens or by the aid of supernatural power. So Paul was using his witchcraft to stop the religion of Islam. He was like Moses who killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. And he tried his best to stop the prophet Muhammad's ministry, but he could not. God used one man to be the founder of the nation of Islam. And it is the fastest growing religion on the planet. By the year of 2050, 2075, we will be the largest religion. So what Paul did was unsuccessful. Although many Christians are under his spell and they'll tell you today, right now, that religion of Islam is fake because Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, heaven preach to you any other gospel let him be accursed Paul was using his divination that's all he was doing that's all he was doing as it is written saw eyed David he saw David he foreseen David through what divination through witchcraft all coming from who Pharaoh's cup the divination which Joseph had in his possession that he dropped into Benjamin's sack. And I just showed you. I just proved this all to you. Now you see with your own eyes. The truth has been right up under your nose. That Christianity is witchcraft. And it was found in the sack 
of Benjamin, which is going to the apostate Paul, the self-proclaimed apostle, the wolf in sheep clothing, whom Jesus warned us about. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.